people tend to think of the T-34 as a real knockout design. Across internet forums and historical debate settings, you find many of the same arguments for what made the tank so great, but the tank history meme community has really just taken the piss out of it. Much like the German Tiger, the T-34 is currently suffering from internet woke disease, with new information coming out that is changing the way we see the Stellinium war machine. The angled armor, the large gun, the great maneuverability, and the high production numbers have all been thrown aside because it turns out the thing was just a nightmare to fight in and was poorly constructed. The memes have portrayed this trait to be a result of the Soviets simply not caring for crew comfort, but upon reflection you quickly find that there is a method to the madness. After World War I, the Soviet Union had a uniquely difficult time developing the doctrine for their armored forces, with conflicts of interest and constant changes to military structure making designing a tank they could use effectively almost impossible. As a result, in the 1920s and 30s, the Soviets really just threw everything at the wall to see what would stick. When the T-34 was introduced in 1940, it was coming into service at a time when the Soviets had finally figured out what a tank should do. Not long after, the Germans came marching in and caught the Red Army with its pants down. Not to say the invasion wasn't expected, but the Soviets were in a transition period of getting rid of outdated tanks like the T-28, T-26, and BT-7 to be replaced with T-34s and KV-1s. With not much consistency in design in the interwar period, the Soviets still didn't really know what made a good tank, and early T-34s suffered greatly as a result. Sure, the tank had good armor and a decent gun, but the thing could barely get where it was trying to go, and the crew inside had no real idea what they were doing. What good is a gun that can penetrate the armor of a Panzer four if you can't even hit the broadside of a barn with it? And what good is advanced sloped armor if it can't even withstand a hit from a door knocker? As the invasion continued, you would expect the Soviets to take their lessons learned and use them to develop a more solid design, but they simply didn't have the time. Germany was marching towards Moscow, and the Red Army had to make do with what they had. As such, focus of tank development was almost entirely shifted towards making the T-34 actually good. Considering the reputation the tank currently holds in many circles, I would say this effort was a resounding success. With the ultimate variant of the T-34, the T-3485, becoming a hallmark staple of Soviet engineering, and seeing use even after World War II in an almost uncountable number of conflicts. At this point, the T-34 is pretty much synonymous with Russia and the will of the Russian people to fight. The silhouette of the vehicle has become so iconic, I can almost hear the hard bass blasting through the walls of the tank itself just by looking at this picture. In summary, the T-34 is a lesson in perseverance in the face of overwhelming odds. For a tank that has such a rocky start, it's amazing to see just how far the Soviets went out of their way to stay by its side. Although the argument can be made they only did this because they had no other choice, that isn't really the point. The Soviet T-34 is a comeback story like no other, because most people don't even realize it was a comeback. It has become a unique tank despite having no real unique qualities, and when also considering its continued use even after World War II, it's clear to see how the T-34 can teach all of us that there is indeed value in polishing a turd. What tank would you like me to give a lesson in next? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, thank you for watching. Ha 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 he ha hoo ha ha he he ha ha ho.